magandang hapon lahat sa inyo. Magandang hapon dito sa Germany, Europe. Pa magandang gabi naman sa Pilipinas. At magang, magandang madaling araw sa USA. So, andito na naman po tayo. Sunday again. So, is the time to worship Amen. with God. Um, sa akin kasi, pag every day, every Sunday, talagang maga pa lang, hindi ako maka, <laughs> maaga akong nagigising. At alam kong Sunday, ito yung um, naanuhan ko na sa, sa buhay ko na ang sarap-sarap kasi ng feeling ng isang. Amen. At yung nararamdaman mo, pag ikaw ay uma-attend ng church, iba kasi talaga yung church sa online. Napipil mo, mas napipil mo ang praise ng Panginoon, ang spirit ng Panginoon kung nandito tayo sa simbahan. At um, ang kagandahan pa noon, nakikita natin ang bawat isa. Uh, andito yung time din na magkakamustahan tayo sa mga atin uh, mga brother and sister. So, ito lang yung advice ko, mas maganda kung dito tayo sa bahay ng Panginoon na mag-worship. Ang sarap pakinggan nung may makikita mo yung uh, matagal mong hindi nakikita tapos umaten sila sa simbahan. So it's the time na yung comportations to its other. Amen. Diba? Kaya pinapayo ko sa inyo. Tayo dito sa simbahan, maluwag ang simbahan, wag tayong <laughs> wag tayong maging kamparma, ano? Kampante. Uh, kampante sa online online um, sa panonood ng online. Mas maganda talaga dito sa simbahan. I promise. So um, I call um, Kuya Jacob for uh, opening. Ah, sister, ay, sorry. Sister Grace for offering opening prayer. Magandang hapon. Uh, at magandang, oh, anong sasabihin ko? Magandang gabi, umaga. O da, hallelujah na lang sa lahat. Amen! Hallelujah! <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, uh, we close our eyes for opening prayer. Lord God, we thank you for gathering again here in Vitersvis. Uh, community service thank you for the blessings thank you for the strength that we are here together again to praise and worship you oh god we ask that you bless us and bless others also to uh, come here inspire uh, bless us that they say uh, the para makita nilang uh, may inspire sila sa mga bagay na nandito sa uh, uh, practice hindi lang po sa online kundi dito mismo sa uh, presence mo O Lord ng pagsamba na naway maging uh, mahikayat ang iba upang pumunta dito sa church O God patnubayan po kami sa lahat uh, we ask this in Jesus name Amen Amen So, um, mahirap talaga yung malabo na mata. <laughs> so, um, may verse ako sa Isaiah 41.10. Ako isa sa iyo, huwag kang matakot. Ako ang iyong Diyos, hindi ka dapat mangamba. Palalakasin kita at tutulungan, tutulungan, tutulungan iingatan at ililigtas. So always pray kasi nandiyan la nandiyan lagi si Lord na naka uh, gabay sa atin lalong lalo na yung may mga karamdaman. So continue praying. Alam naman natin na uh, yung Panginoon talaga sa tabi natin. Ano man ang pangangailangan mo, ibibigay niya sa iyo. Kaya continue praying and let us continue singing our praise ship work uh, work song with uh, 
our pastor and uh, our uh, pastora Barbara and Herman Cabanta. Hallelujah. Praise God. Napakaganda nung binasa ni Sister uh, Eileen, uh, Arlene. Um, yes, but before we go on to our uh, worship, let's just stand up and let's sing our family song. Welcome. I love this family. Father who never changes, who is there, the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that we have brothers and sisters around us that we can share and encourage each other, comfort each other, and praise the Lord together. Amen? Amen. <laughs> so let's all stand up and raise our hallelujahs to the Lord who deserves all praise and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a
sing a little louder louder than the unbelief sing a little louder my weapon is a melody sing a little louder heaven comes to fight for me sing a little louder i'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder things. Let's shout it loud with joy. Amen. Shout it loud. Shout it loud. Sing for joy. Go tell it to the nation what the Lord has done. Shout it loud. Shout it loud. Yes. Sing for to the Lord and call upon his name make mention that his name is exalted give thanks unto the Lord and call upon his name declaring his deeds among the people so let's sing unto the Lord for he's done excellent things let it be known in all the earth so Sing unto the Lord, for He's done excellent things. Let it be known in all the earth. Shout it loud, shout it loud, and sing for joy. We'll tell it to the nations what the Lord has done. Shout it loud, sing for Yes, O Lord, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the God never changing. That's why we can trust you. That's why we can trust that you hold on your promises. And we're standing on your promises. We know that you are the truth, the way, and the life. And we praise you and we worship you for who you are. You are not a God created by human hands. You are not a God dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plan. 
Because it's just the way it is.
glorify your name glory glory to your name all power and dominion to you Lord you deserve all glory and praise hallelujah thank you Lord in Jesus name amen glory to God God is good amen. Amen. he's always with us he's guiding our way he never leaves us nor forsakes us. And wherever we stand in our life, we know that he is fighting for us. Amen? Good to know. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastora and uh, Pastor. Really, how great our Lord. Did you feel the song, right? Kaya talagang... Iba talaga pag nandito ka sa, sa bahay ng Panginoon mag-worship. So, um, we are in the next um, uh, who want to testimony uh, to our brother and sister. Who want to uh, maybe our blessing in this week. It's time to thanks God Someone want to share the testimony? Okay, ako muna. <laughs> ako talaga eh, um, I want to say, really, it's long time na akong nag, um, nag the driving license. Um, so, last Friday, nag uh, test ako. Pero, <laughs> <laughs> na failed ako <laughs> that's not matter yeah try and try so hindi naman ako nawawala ng faith sa Panginoon alam kong may time na darating tayo dyan so andyan na may impatient ko siyempre ninenervyos talaga tayo first time so talagang <laughs> nervyos na nervyos ako <laughs> Talaga naman wala akong ginawa kundi magbuntong hininga, Lord, guide me, Lord, guide me, Lord. So, umabot ako ng 30 minutes. Uh, yung parking ko, it's okay naman. Pasado naman yung parking ko. So, uibong-uibong naman. Pag parking naman, so hindi sila strict gano. Basta nakapasok ka sa parking, okay na. <laughs> Sabi na, akala ko failed na ako doon kasi sa parking pa lang, oh. Sabi ko, hindi ako makapasok. Naipasok ko yung car pero hindi siya talaga tama. Sabi niya, wait ha. Ako oh, sabi ko, may chance pa. Akala ko, uwi na ako sa, <laughs> sa tube. <laughs> so, wait ha, wait ha. Okay. Hingal ako talaga. <laughs> sabi ko, Lord, guide me. <laughs> Alisin mo na yung kabak mo. So, ah, habang tumatagal, namawala yung kabak mo. Pero, meron akong napil dun sa shield. Sabi ko, okay lang yan. Sabi naman nung uh, propong lera ko at saka yung propong um, uh, Proper. Eh, sabi niya, okay lang, sabi niya. Alam ko na nervous ka, sabi niya. Next mile, kaya mo na yan, sabi niya. I 15 minutes na lang, sabi niya. Siyempre, nakakapanghinayang. So, another pera naman, no? Pero, uh, uh, nagsasala, nagpapasalamat ako sa Panginoon kasi napuprovide niya yung needs ko. Talagang itong month na to, talagang wala akong wound girl na natanggap. So, nagkakasya pa rin. Sabi ko, saan kaya nag... 
Sa kayo nanggagaling? Parang umaapaw sa bulsa ko. Kaya, kaya tayo, siyempre, sabi nga sa Bible na, uh, um, kung ano yung blessing mo, share mo. Para nun, yung, yung bulsa mo, kasi kung hindi mo huhugutin yan, i-share sa blessing mo, walang papasok kasi pool na pool na. Kaya dapat lang talaga i-share natin yung blessing natin. Kaya ako naman gano'n, nagpapatunay talaga ako. Hindi sa totoo lang, I am proud of myself. Lalo lalo sa Panginoon. Kasi uh, kahit na yung income ko talaga is hanggang dun lang, nakakaraos ako. Nakakaraos ako. Kaya sabi ko, sabi ko kay Kati, Ka, doon sa kay Pram. Sabi ko, ganito lang yung natangkap ko. Pero tingnan mo yung wallet ko. <laughs> Umaapaw pa rin. <laughs> Kaya sabi ko, uh, yung talagang ako kasi, um, yun yung naano ko na sa sarili ko na may magtanong sa akin. Uh, tatanong ko muna kung saan gagamitin. Normal. Tanong mo kung saan. Pero kung sa health naman, Lagi naman ako nagigib sa kanila. Sige, pambili mo ng gamot or else. Pagkain ng mga bata sa sa simbahan. So, open ako sa mga ganon. Kaya kaya yun ang inaano ko, pinapasalamat ko sa Panginoon kahit na magbigay ako ng ganito, pero yung darating sa akin talagang mas malaki pa. Kaya salamat sa Panginoon at uh, sa paggagabay mo sa akin, sa pamilya ko. Um lalo ng lalo na sa dalawa kong anak na alam kong kahit hindi ko kasi hindi ako showing na mother so alam na ng Panginoon yan talaga hindi ako showing sa mga anak ko yung love hindi ako showing sa kanila pero alam ng Panginoon kung gaano ka showing dito sa loob ang pagmamahal ko sa kanila kaya salamat sa Panginoon kasi Uh, yung dalawa kong anak, yan ang aking yaman. Salamat, Panginoon. So, we'll be the next. Okay, if who want to testimony, just come in the front. Good and bad. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Last Monday, I give up my resignation. So, meron akong binigyan na resignation sa, sa boss ko. Siyempre, hindi na tayo sufri so, so din sa, ano, sa, pam ah, sa pamamalakad o kaya sa mga sa trabaho na hihirap masyado. Pero, praise God, kaya pa rin. <laughs> uh, I thought na sa December pa ako mag-e-end ng contract. Pero, hindi ko alam na, hindi namin alam na In four weeks, pwede na palang effective yung resignation. So, effective so far, uh, October 31, uh, wala na akong trabaho. Pero thanks God. Hindi pa rin tayo makawala ng trabaho. <laughs> I have my... Uh, for Stellung is fresh. Interview last Wednesday. On, after the interview, Yeah, uh, sinabi na ko kung, kung gusto ko yung trabaho, siyempre, tayo oo na oo. <laughs> Tapos, uh, Friday, nag-approval. Nag uh, and then, after that, uh, yung contract, parating na. Kasi, uh, hindi mismo doon sa station, manggagaling yung contract, kundi sa ibang, sa main station. So, Uh, thank God, meron na uling trabaho. Kahit na wala, God is always good. Amen. Hallelujah. Napakabuti mo talaga, Panginoon. Talagang ganyan, pag may nawala, may darating. Oo, kaya faith lang ang kailangan natin. Faith lang sa Panginoon kasi lagi naman siyang nandiyan. ba diba, sabi ko nga sa verse kangina na kung ano yung pangangailangan na lagi na, laging nakaagapay ang ating Panginoon. So, wala tayo, um, wag tayong mawala ng pag-asa. At um, ako din, malapit na rin. Mag-start <laughs> mag na rin ako <laughs> sa, sa November 1 ng trabaho. Inihintay ko na lang din yung contract. So, napakasaya kaya pag nagtitestimony ka. Walang kapantay. 
Kaya, we are, I am calling who, who want to share the blessing. Nanay? Oh, sarap. <laughs> ah, sarap kayo na pakinabang yung... Na, na share mo yung blessing mo. Good afternoon, everyone. I love you all. <laughs> Uh, napakasarap talaga totoo yan dahil na-feel ko yan na-feel ko yan kahit anong mangyari anong mangyari nandito ako sa dito sa kwan sa uh, mag-praise mag noon hindi ko yun ginagawa di ba? wala pero nung dumating sa akin si Lord kahit anong mangyari kahit na kahit na sino dyan na mag sa akin, hindi ako pumupunta talaga dahil number one sa akin si Lord. Siya ang best friend ko, boyfriend ko, lahat-lahat, lahat-lahat. Dahil na, 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 naranasan ko talaga yung may takot ako. I, I, yung, yung ano ni Juan kanina, ni uh, Sister Andrea, totoo yun, na-feel ko yun. Na nanonood ka ba, Pastor? Na yung, di ba, kung kung matatakot tayo. Natatakot tayong mamatay, na natatakot tayong ano, nawala yun. Nawala. May takot kasi ako eh noon. Takot ako talaga kasi nag-iisa na ako, lalo na nung nawala yung asawa ko. Takot ako, takot akong mag-isa sa buhay. Hanggang nung na... na Pumasok ako sa Bible na pag, pagbabasa. Nawala yung takot ko. Lalo na yung, yung may fear not, sabi niya nga, I am with you. Yun, yun ang palagi kong, palagi kong kwan. Palagi kong binabasa yun kung maatake sa akin yung takot. Kaya, kaya kwan, kaya ini-encourage ko kayo na magbasa ng Bible. 100% ang gawin natin na ano hindi lang 90% 80% kasi yan ang ginagawa ko ngayon yung ano yung nagbabasa ako palagi tuwing tuwing uh, kahit na isang verse lang dalawang verse lang sa maghap mag isa araw-araw masaya na si Lord yun dahil na nag-i-increase nag increase yung 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 kaalaman natin at saka na, nakikita ko lahat yung mga kakasagutan ng mga problema ko noon. Na ah, ga, yu, ma, yu, ganito pala si Lord, mahal na mahal niya tayo kako. Ma, kaya nawala lahat yung kan yung mga takot ko. Hindi na ako takot na mag-isa. O hindi na ako dati pati sa train takot akong sumakay. Di ba, hindi ako sumasakay, nandun, nandun lang ako nakakulong sa bahay dahil wala naman akong auto. Ngayon, ngayon binigyan ako ng wisdom ni Lord na kung paano ako mag, ma, ma, tumayo sa sarili kong paa. Dahil noon, nung buhay pa yung asawa ko, siyempre may auto, may, may ganyan, hindi ko naranasan yung mag-train ng 20 years. 20 years na hindi ko alam. Kaya nung namatay, Takot na takot ako, nanginginig ako pag na, nasa train na ako. Nasa train kasi na, noong, ano, noong bata-bata pa ako, may experience kasi ako na yung, yung pag ang train noon ay yung iganon mo. Nung iginanon ko, hindi nagbukas. Hindi ko na, na late na bumukas. E, umandar yung, ano, yung train. Kaya doon ako nagkaroon ng takot nung nawala si Warner na. Baka, baka, baka umandar ulit, nandun pa rin yung ano. Ngayon, nung, nung nagdasal-dasal na ako, nagdasal-dasal na, nawala lahat ang takot. Dahil kay Lord, thank you Lord, thank you, thank you. At tinulungan mo ako. Salamat po, Sister Nanay. Sister na namin, Nanay pa. So, napaka-blessing na yan. Blessing na yun kasi meron ka ng sister in Christ, meron ka pang nanay in Christ, di ba? Oh. Uh, sino pa po ang gustong mag-testimony? So, one, two, three. Okay. So, I think uh, maybe next next week. 
magsishare yung iba dyan ng testimony nila. Nahihiya lang sila. <laughs> so, I'm calling now Pastor Herman and Pastor Barbara to, ay, opening, opening, offering prayer pala natin, ano. Okay. Uh, can I call Nanay again for the offering prayer? Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for all the blessings you, you give to us. And it's time to re return to you the blessings that you, ha you have given us. Lord, there is a saying, uh, there is your, uh, word in, your, uh, in the Bible that it's better, it's better to give than to receive. So, uh, itinataas ko po ang ang op, love and opening na ito para for your for the glory of your for, for your glory oh lord please uh, i pray that uh, you use this for your kingdom to help the poor and the sick and for your church lord please uh, bless this offering lord for your glory in the name of jesus amen Salamat po, Sister Nanay, for the offering prayer. Uh, may I call uh, Pastor Herman on Pastor Barbara to... Ay, Pastor Herman only. Uh, to hear our uh, word of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sister Ar Arlene. Yes. <laughs> Salamat sa mga kapatiran na nagpapagamit sa Panginoon. Amen. So, praise God. At nakikita na nga natin na, yeah, eh, that's part of it. No, manibios at the beginning, pero God is giving us strength and courage to go on. So, pero I think that next time we should try to speak in English para naintindihan tayo nito. <laughs> I know that uh, napakasarap kasing magsalita ng uh, gamitin gamitin ang ating sariling salita or, or siguro I have to interpret pwede ring ganon no <laughs> Yeah those who can speak English you just speak English kung hindi then we will interpret so that uh, our sister Tatiana would also understand right sayang din naman you know sayang kung hindi niya naintindihan yung mga uh, testimony natin because our testimonies are really really encouraging very encouraging and it's uh, praising uh, our God <clears throat> so it's our second week of talking about our uh, mission fivefold mission <clears throat> Yes, the topic this month is compassion, right? Compassion. Sinong nanood ng service kahapon sa Hanover? We were, uh, they had our uh, first uh, streaming in Hanover yesterday. Um, they wanted to have uh, a, a more regular service. Actually, they want to have it every Sunday already, but... <clears throat> Since uh, Pastor Regina cannot uh, do it yet, so they decide to do it every other week until the Lord would um, send more workers in that area. But praise God that He is already uh, doing um, great things in Hanover. Yes, yun uh, nga kahapon they have already their first streaming. Praise God. Yes, and Pastor Regina talk about. Uh, compassion and this morning Pastor Omar talk about compassion who watched this morning he was also talking about compassion so praise God for this unity in, our, in what we are talking about because indeed there should be unity in 
our uh, mission, especially in um, accomplishing all these things that we are, uh, we, we have been given uh, by God. Yes, as a family, Shalom family, not only here in Valerspice, but also in Koblenz, in, in Hanover, all of us, Shalom Germany, we should be united in um, accomplishing what the Lord has given us, the task that He has given unto us. And so in this past three or four months, this is the last month, we have been talking about our mission as a family. We said that we have fivefold mission, and that is to worship the Lord. What else? Uh, evangel evangelize, evangelism, and then discipleship. That means we uh, teach our uh, brothers and sisters so that they will grow in the knowledge of the Lord. And then we have, what else? Uh, fellowship. Of course, part of our uh, mission is to fellowship with one another and to really, you know, we have talked about that last month, that fellowshipping is not just eating together, you know, but really to have fellowship first of all with the Lord and fellowship with one another, doing all the things that God has com commanded us and of course compassion. And that is really putting into action what we uh, have learned and yes we said last week that compassion um, according to Webster dictionary is it is a sympathetic consciousness of others distress together with a desire to alleviate it so in other words it is a consciousness it's an awareness of the suffering of others with a, a feeling for it you know ibang na na feel natin yung suffering ng ating kapatid or ng mga ibang tao but it does not stop there it's not just sympathy pastor regina defined this sympathy yesterday now it's it's really this feeling for others feeling what others would, uh, are feeling for example when when a brother or sister or a friend uh, lost a loved one, we say our condolences, right? And we say we sympathize with you, or we, we write our deepest sympathy. Yes, nakikiramay. That's sympathy. But compassion is beyond sympathy. Hindi nag-i-stop doon sa sympathy lang. does not stop there. It goes on taking and uh, uh, um, one step more than sympathy, it is taking an action to help alleviate that suffering, to help the need when we see it. Amen. So, to put it in another word, another uh, in a simple way, it is a, it is an inward emotion that will cause an outward action okay an emotion we feel what uh, we feel the need or we see the need first we feel the need and then we do something about that need okay that's compassion and Jesus of course is our uh, best model for for compassion he lived it as when he was still on earth um, and he taught it to his disciples pastor omar was talking about or he mentioned this morning that in the bible we can see a lot of examples or models of men and women who have shown compassion and he mentioned some of them but today I would like us to focus on one parable that Jesus himself uh, taught. Um, but we know that Jesus himself has 
really exhibited or, or he has modeled this. Yes, he, he showed it. Wherever he went, Jesus showed compassion to the people. And we can read in Matthew, the chapter 9, verse, verses 35 to 37, it says, Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the good news of the kingdom. So he was giving, um, he was doing something about the spiritual uh, part of the people and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. So he also dealt with the physical need of the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were harassed and scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus was moved with compassion. So in this passage, is it shown? Wow. Thank you, Sister Kathy. <laughs> we miss uh, our brother Tong today. Oh, yeah, by the way, we have to pray for him. He's not feeling well. That the Lord will touch him and heal him. So, um, yeah, in this passage, we see two things. That Jesus dealt with the spiritual part. So he met the needs, the spiritual needs of the people and also the physical needs of the people. Yes? Wherever he went, he would see, he would teach, right? And he would see the need. For example, if there are people who are sick, he would heal them. He was feeding them. Yes, he fed them. And he comforted them. So Jesus was showing compassion all the time in his ministry. Okay, he, he taught them the good news of the kingdom. He healed them. He fed them. So in the same manner, we as a family, a Shalom family, we have taken this as part of our mission, yes? To show compassion. Both uh, to meet the need of the people um, spiritually and also physically. Yeah, what are, what are we doing to meet the needs of the people spiritually? Spiritual need. We do evangelism, right? And we have talked about that two or three months ago, about evangelism. And praise God for the, the outreaches that we are doing. It's growing. They are growing. The outreach we did in Koblenz, they are growing. The one in Hanover. As we can see, we already have their streaming yesterday. And we are making partners with ministries in the Philippines. For example, with Pastor uh, Magbitang, Sister Genoveva in the north, and also in the south uh, with the uh, tribal ministries. So we are trying to do our part as a family, okay? A Shalom family, we are doing our part in the meeting the spiritual need of the people. But not only that, we also try to do our part in meeting the physical needs of the people. Um, la last month, we started our uh, school project, our mission project in, in the Philippines. Of course, it started small, yes? We're not a big group, and we... <laughs> Oh, but praise God for your generosity and your gifts that we can start even only in a uh, no, small way. We started with two daycare centers, okay, in the Philippines, among the tribes, among the Tiboli tribes. These are, you know, small children aging two to four, okay, at daycare centers. Now we, we are so blessed that we have uh, volunteers, volunteer teachers who are teaching these kids. So it's starting only as a daycare center, but as these children would grow, let us say they enter, uh, they become six-year-old, then we can start 
grade one, right? Grade one or, uh, yes, six year old is grade one, right? Or seven? Seven? Okay, so depending on the age, uh, or the requirement of the government, then our project will go with them. It will grow with them, okay? So if it's seven, then our school grade one will start at when they are seven. Praise God for that. Two daycare centers. And I've heard that three more will be opening this month. God is good and He is providing needs. Again, with this small community we have, we are accomplishing big things for the Lord. Hallelujah. And we are believing greater things, much greater things to come. And we want to be part of that. Amen? I've heard also um, with my conversation, uh, um, in my conversation with my uh, sister who is um, leading uh, the group down south, she said that in the daycare centers they would also have to, um, to provide food for them to feed them, to give them lunch. So that too would be a great opportunity for us, you know, to, to be part of, to provide them with food. You know, these people, they are really, really poor, very, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I grew up with them I, I, in that area, you know. So I know they're, they're their situation and we want to help them we want to um, educate them because of course the Philippine government is not so uh, it's very limited what they are doing they, it's, they provide schools only on the, the plains up the mountain walana no no school so the school system does not reach our brothers and sisters up the mountain. And so, this lack we want to fill in. Dito tayo papasok. To provide education for them. And, you know, kind of prepare them for their future. There's a need especially in our country where we come from, Philippines. Amen? But praise God for this great opportunity for us. And praise God for your generosity, for your giving, for all your gifts. As I have said, we are a small group, and yet we are doing great job for the Lord. Great things, great things. Now how much gratitude they are showing that they are, that we are supporting them. Yes? Now the Apostle Paul um, encouraged us in his letter to the Galatians. In Galatians 6, 9 to 10, he wrote, Let's not be weary in doing good, for we will reap in due time if we don't give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let's do what is good toward all men, and especially toward those who are of the household of the faith. So let us not go weary. In other words, let's not go tr uh, tired in doing good. Because uh, sometimes, you know, it's possible that we get tired, like, I'm tired of giving, you know. Heta na naman, project na naman, you know, need na naman. But the Apostle Paul told us not to grow tired. Because you will reap, he said, in due time. We will get tired if we just, you know, are doing it on our own effort. We need to have the compassion that comes from the Lord. Amen. The compassion that He showed us, the 
compassion that we received from him. Remember, he did it freely for us. And so, we, in return, should also show compassion to the needy. Amen? We will not grow tired if we have compassion in our heart. It's the love that comes from God that should grow in our hearts and would flow, you know, out from our heart to help the needy. Amen. And as I said, I would like to, to focus now on, uh, on a parable that Jesus told. It's a parable of the Good Samaritan. I'm, I'm sure many of you already know this. And there are many commentaries about this, about this parable, and they talk about this parable in many perspectives that we they present or that we can learn a lot different lessons several different lessons out of this one parable but since we are talking about compassion today let's just look at the lesson on compassion let's see what we will learn from this and i would like us that uh, it's my prayer that this will kind of stir us stir this this compassion within us that it will be alive again if it has already you know died down but i i I, I'm, I'm, I don't think that it has died down but just the same that this compassion that's already within us will grow much more for the glory of god amen so let's read Luke 10. That's where we will find this parable. Luke 10, and let me just uh, kind of read along as we go on. In verse 30, it says, Jesus answered, A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who both stripped him and beat him, and departed leaving him half dead. By chance, a certain priest was going down that way. Let me, um, let's just stay there for a while. And in verse 30, we see that there is this man who is in need, man who was robbed by robbers. He was going, uh, walking oh, his way towards Jericho. Now, along the way, the robbers came and, you know, he, they didn't only rob him from uh, his, with his uh, things, proper, uh, you know, physical things, proper things, but they also um, wounded him, okay? And he, they left him half dead. Now, maybe we're asking, why, why is he traveling alone in the first place? You know, doesn't he know that he's, you know, it can be dangerous to travel alone? So, in our human thinking, we can think, oh, silver shoe, <laughs> you know, in German, silver shoe. It's his fault. It's, you know, it was his fault. And so he needs to suffer like that. But you see, compassion would not do that. He would see the need in that situation. And in this life, in, the, in this road that we are taking on earth, we will always see needs. Just look around and you will see needs. If you look at the third world countries, much more, we see the needs of the people. I mean, we all, most of us come from the Philippines, a third world. And when we see their situation there, and then we compare it with our situation, we just can say, oh, we are blessed, right? We are blessed to be here. 
You wake up in the morning, you open the ref, and you see food, right? There's food. There is food in the ref. And sometimes our problem is which one to take because not, you, there are many choices in the, in the ref. But yesterday when I was having a, a breakfast, I was contemplating on this and I was thinking, what about these kids who are there? You know, the, the ones we are supporting, for example. What have they eaten for breakfast? And then I look at what I, I'm eating. I feel, you know, I, I, I feel kind of, you know, coomish to think like that. No, think, what have they eaten? Did they even, even have breakfast? You know? Yeah. When I was um, in high school, uh, some of my classmates were also part of our church at that time. And I would go on one, one weekend up the mountain, the nearest mountain we would climb. You know, young, young ones, <laughs> teenagers would like some, to do some adventure sometimes. So we went up the, the mountain and there we found a family, one family. And then, yeah, they have a, a small house, very rugged house, you know, you know mga kubo kubo sa atin, very light materials. Uh, the roof is made of, you know, grass or nipa, if they even find, uh, they can afford nipa, but mostly grass, uh, kugun. And then on their ground was a fire, an open fire. And we were observing them. They were friendly, very nice nice people but I saw them throwing um, kamote on the, in that fire and then I was uh, I don't know if I asked but uh, I will learn later that that would be their lunch so <laughs> after that visit uh, my, th these friends who went with me, we, we organized some, some things, you know, rice, canned goods, uh, salt, uh, sugar, all the basic things. And then we went up there the next time and gave it to them. And they were so happy. But the joy we had in doing that thing was overflowing after that. I mean, we need to see the need and act on it. Amen? Do we see the need around us? If we look at the compassion of God upon us, what he did on the cross for us, it, it can never be repaid, right? We can never pay. But he did it. He saw the need. He saw the need for our salvation. He saw us as sinners and we are leading to uh, eternal damnation. And he saw that need, that we need salvation. And with her, his compassion, he sent his son. And Jesus allowed himself to you know, suffer just for us. We were undeserving but just the same, he showed us his compassion. Now, what, what, do, what do we feel when we look around and see the needs? How do we respond? Now, if we read further, we can see how the people at that time, or in the parable, responded to this. In verse, verses 31 and 32, it says, Now by coincidence, a priest was going down. I don't know if it's the same uh, translation, no. So let me just read from there. By chance, a certain priest was going down that way. When he saw him, he passed.
passed by on the other side. And the next one, verse 32, it says, in the same way, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him pass by on the other side, a priest and a Levite, they saw the man devastated, wounded, laying down there, needs help. They saw. What did they do? Instead of going to them, they, <laughs> you know, they made a loop as far as possible from that man went another they went to the other side of the road and just passed by very sad the, the, the irony of it is these two people is a priest okay one and the second one is a Levi who is a Levite he's a servant in the temple okay a minister in the temple so both of them are leaders of the church when we look at it in our setting now that could have been me for example and maybe yeah one of you we just passed by saw the need and passed by we went far as, as far as possible away from that person they are very religious, in fact. These, the priests and the Levites, they are very religious. And sometimes we can find ourselves too in this. We can be so religious, we focus on things, and this, you know, the programs of the church, the ministry, and things like that. But sometimes we neglect to see the need. But God is, or Jesus is showing this to tell us something. Who would care for the need? Well, the attitude of those two is, who cares? I don't care. In fact, one commentary says that maybe the reason they, they went away is that they don't want to be, to be madumihan uh, ba? You know, because they are priests, they are Levites, they should be you know, kind of holy, and they, if they touch someone who is dirty, then they would get dirty. Or they might be thinking, oh, it can be a bait, or, you know, uh, what is a bait? Um, that someone has to trap them, you know, something like that. So they were just thinking for the, about themselves, to protect themselves. I pray that this is not our attitude. Two men, they saw the need, they saw the, the, the peril of that person. They saw that they have to do something, but they did not. They were not willing to do it. They never cared. They just care for themselves, for the reputation. They were callous. You know that word, callous. Yung kalyo ba? Masyado nang ma, ma, makapal yung kalyo. Wala na silang pakiramdam. I hope we are not like that. Manhid na in Tagalog. They are callous of the need of others but we'll see in verse 33 there's another person we see here the readiness of one who is really concerned verse 33 but a certain Samaritan as he traveled came where he was when he saw him he was moved with compassion Ayana. he was moved with compassion the ng sympathy he felt and then he was really moved with it. Okay? He saw the need. And then if we go further, he came to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. He set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. It's the exact opposite of the other two. Here is 
a Samaritan. In fact, you know, um, during that time, the Samaritan is considered the enemy of Jews. Pero siya pa yung tumulong. He was even the one who helped. Compassion is selfless. Okay, selfless. The other two, the first two men who passed by, they were selfish. But this Samaritan who was moved by compassion was selfless. He did not think about his reputation. He did not think about his time, you know, that, that would have cost him time too. Okay? What else? Compassion is sincere. He took that first move. What did it say? In verse 34, he said, and he went to him. The two, the Levites and the priest, they went away from him. They took the other side of the road. But this Samaritan, he went to him. He took that step towards that person in need. Hallelujah. If we care, we take that step forward. We step out of our comfort zones. Yeah, it's very convenient to just say, yeah, kawawa naman. Well, it's very pitiful. And do nothing. But if we really care, if we have compassion, then we do something. We will take that step out of our comfort zone to help. Even when it's very con inconvenient. I, there was uh, this Shechem um, meeting last Friday and the, the exhorter talked about uh, giving and she was saying, giving until it hurts. Have you heard of that statement? Giving until it hurts. That's compassion. That's compassion. Wag naman na, when it hurts, you are starting to complain. You know? <laughs> when we ever do that, then make sure that it is from your heart. Amen? True compassion will not grumble, will not complain. Hallelujah. And then this Samaritan didn't just go and observe, you know, what's going on with this person ng, ng ociosu lang, kundi he went to hell. What did it say uh, before that one of this? He bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. He did something. So he was touching this dirty man at that time. I, I can imagine he's full of blood. He's wounded, right? And what else? He used his own resources. What did he do? He bound up his wounds. So he used bandage. I don't know where he got that bandage. Bandage. Pilais. Uh, maybe he just used his. You know, before they have this mga balabal and, and things like that. Maybe he used those things. And then he was carrying uh, what an oil and a wine, and he used this. It's supposed to be for his family, maybe, I don't know. But he used this to care for the wounds of the man. Compassion is generous. It's generous. So this Samaritan, he did all what he could to help that man. He used his own supply. The oil, the the wine, the bandage. And then, what else? On the next day, when he depart, uh, before that one, there's something. When he saw him, uh, yeah. He, he brought him, it says it. He set him on his own animal. It might be a donkey, I don't know. And brought him to an inn and took care of him. How generous that is. He used even his own transport, trans, uh, means of transportation. I could imagine that he placed him on that donkey and he 
just would walk. He preferred that needy person. And then, hindi pa, na, hindi, hindi pa siya na-satisfied doon. He went to an inn or a hotel in our time now. And he, you know, uh, gave shelter for that man in that hotel. Imagine that. Using his own expense, his own resources. Compassion is generous. What else? Overnight, he said, uh, uh, the next, and then it says, on the next day. Th that means that you stayed with this man in that hotel and took care of him, right? Overnight. Right? Hindi yung iniwan niya na lang basta yung, yung tao. No, he stayed with him. And then on the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii and gave them to the host and said to him, take care of him, whatever you spend. Beyond that, I will repay you when I return. Nag-iwan pa siya ng, ng finances to the host of the, the inn so that that man will be taken care of. He used his resources. And then he even promised that when he comes back, he will pay all that was used for him, all the expenses. Compassion is generous, and compassion perseveres. You know that word, persevere. Yes. In the young, oh, excited at first. Yes, yeah, okay, let's help. After some time, the fire died out. No, this good Samaritan persevered. He said, when I come back, I will pay all that was used for him. Hallelujah. What a generosity. What a compassion. This is a parable taught by Jesus himself. I don't know if I put that in, in the slide, but he said uh, in the uh, following verses, do likewise, he said. It is his command to us, then do the same thing as this Samaritan. Hallelujah. Is it there, sis? Right. Then Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. This is not just for that man, uh, for that person Jesus was talking to. This message is for us even today. Jesus is saying, do the same. Do likewise. First Peter 4, <clears throat> verse 9 to 10, it says, Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Um, as every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Let me just read that in, in NIV. It says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling, without complaining. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. So the question is, are we a good steward of all the gifts that God has given us? Are we a good steward of all the blessings that God has given us? All these blessings are not given to us just for ourselves to enjoy. Yeah, yung sinasabi ni Sister uh, Arlene kanina. What comes in, you use to help. I mean, to, for others. So that there's another room. You know, there's room for more to come, right? If you don't take that out and use it for others, then your, your pocket is already full. There's no more room for more blessing. 
ha l e l u y a h Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Be good stewards of all the gifts that you have received. Life is stewardship. Stewardship. What is stewardship? y u n bang marunong tayo ng gamitin kung anong pinagkatiwala sa atin ng panginoon. That we know how to use properly that which God has entrusted unto us in various forms. Sabi niya kanina, in various forms. So whatever form that is, may it be financial, may it be, uh, yeah, I remember <laughs> Sister Kathy was, you know, bring, bringing some things. <laughs> Praise God! Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, and no, no um, yeah, whatever blessing that you have received from God, sabi dito nga in various forms, so in different forms. If it's finances, then be good steward of that. If it's good health, then be a steward of that good health. If it's spiritual gifts, you know that that we have different spiritual gifts, right? The gift of Prophecy, gift of uh, knowledge, things like that. Uh, you will learn that in your discipleship classes. Use it. Minister to your brothers and sisters, and then let's minister to the needy. Amen. The Apostle Paul uh, commended the Macedonian church in his letter to the Corinthians. He said, Second uh, Corinthians eight verses one to five. He said, "Moreover, brothers, we make known to you the grace of God which has been given in the assemblies of Macedonia. How that in much proof of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded to the riches of their liberality." For according to their power, I testify, yes, and beyond their power, they gave up their own accord, begging us with much entreaty to receive this grace and the fellowship and the service to the saints. He was commending, not command, commend, uh, praising the Macedonian church for their generosity. It says there that even in the midst of their poverty, in their need, they were. Happy in giving, in helping. They were generous, and I believe that that's coming out of their love for God. Do we love God? Do we understand God's love for us? Have we understood that love should overflow, should flow out of us? Compassion should come out. God is our is the author of compassion. We were the ones who were in need, and the Bible says that all have sinned. All of us, no one exempted. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we know that the wages of sin, the Bible is saying that the wages or the, the penalty of sin is death. So we as sinners, we should be penalized to death, eternal death. But God, through His compassion and love, He sent His Son for us, that we might have eternal life. Amen. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Did we deserve it? Do we deserve it? No. We do not deserve it. The Bible is saying that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still in sin, He already died for us. He already loved us. That means we didn't deserve that. Love that compassion, 
And yet he showed it. He gave it to us. In the same manner, we should love also others. We should show compassion without looking, you know, kind of looking who deserves it or not. Without judging. Compassion does not judge. It will just flow even to those who are undeserving. God's compassion is the example that we should be following. Great model for us. And again, we are so privileged to have opportunities to, to help. Amen. It is my prayer that we as a family or first of all as followers of Christ individual individually uh, that we show compassion wherever we go when we see need and our capacity let us help and also that we as a family not only here in violence those of you who are watching on, on uh, internet in Koblenz in Hanover we Shalom uh, Germany would be united in our mission to show compassion amen let us practice this what the Lord has uh, taught us he told that man do it also let us also do it and let's show compassion let's show our love to those who are in need amen may it is really my prayer that when we get out from this this place that our our consciousness of all these things that we become more aware of all these things that the Lord has been teaching us. Yes, this fivefold uh, mission that we have been talking about in the last four months, five months, that it is that we are aware of it, that we put it really in our heart. This is our mission as a church, but not only as a church also as a believer an individual believer in Christ amen of course as a church we have our projects and and uh, ministries that we are partnering with to to show all these things but also as an individual when the Lord shows you an opportunity then act on it amen amen praise the Lord let's stand up Heavenly Father, thank you, O oh God, for your word. Thank you for your great love for us, your great compassion for us. That while we were still sinners, you died for us. Thank you for that gift, free gift. We are undeserving, O oh Lord, but you gave it just the same. Thank you, Lord, and we're, we're so happy to have it. We're so blessed for your great love and through which we have eternal life, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings that we are receiving every day, every day, Lord. Help us, O oh God, to recognize all these things, to recognize that all things that we get come from you. You alone, O oh God, are the source of all these things. And help us, O oh Lord, to reach out to others, to use faithfully all the, the, the blessings that you have given us for your glory and honor. Oh, may you be glorified, O oh God, in our means. May you be glorified in Shalom family, O oh Lord. Bless each one, Lord. 
each family that is here represented in Shalom Church, O God. Here in Vilesville, in Koblenz, in Hanover, O Lord. Bless each one of us, O God, each family, that we can walk according to your will, that we can show, O God, our compassion to the needy. Hallelujah. You are so good, O God. You are so good. You are so good. Lord, we are praying for our brother Tong today, O God, wherever he is right now, Lord, at home, maybe laying in bed. I pray, O God, that you just stretch forth your hand upon him. You said in your word that by your stripes we are healed. We claim that healing for him even right now in the name of Jesus. Also for Sister Venus, O oh Lord. Thank you, God, that you already given, have given him her, uh, her healing, O oh Lord. And we continue to pray for her that you will receive complete healing and restoration of good health and strength in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And all those who are sick in body right now, O oh God, I pray. You just heal them. Heal them in the name of Jesus. Those who are also are uh, bound with depression or any trouble, oh God, bound with anger and bitterness, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Claim your freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we magnify you. We glorify you in our midst, O oh Lord. You are so good. We are, you, you are so good. We give you all the praises, O oh God, and adoration in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. So, thank you so much for, uh, yes, for um, heeding to this message. It's really my prayer that we will put it into action. And let's now call our uh, kids and let's close with our victory song. Uh, you still want to still say something? Or no? Okay. Oh, by the way, um, next Sunday, just an announcement. We will be uh, joining the Koblenz people, so we will uh, join the service in Koblenz, okay, in the morning. So there will be no service here in Weilersmiths, instead in uh, Koblenz. So let's sing our victory song.
love of the Father and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for having joined us today. See you again next week. Oh, not here. Okay, not in Valerius, but in Copeland. Okay, bye-bye. God bless bye -bye. you.